he had sold his soul. He had made his choice. I think he meant to do good. Uh, somewhere along the way, something's changed. Those who knew Chad Daybill say he began his ministry with pure intentions. I would say he has spiritual gifts and abilities. I've seen them in action, in very personal situations, and I felt their genuineness in, in sort of a profound way. Like Daybell, Eric Smith was raised in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, known to outsiders as the Mormon Church. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, as the name indicates, believes that we are living in a particular moment in the world's history when God will return again and that people need to prepare for that return. The two shared beliefs that challenged LDS doctrine, including theories about the end of the world and reincarnation. Beliefs that Smith said led to his excommunication from the church. That was what brought us together. And so this idea of wanting to warn and help spread that message. Now Smith sees his old friend in a far more sinister light. When someone is gifted or have, has that ability to discern messages from heaven, I think they are equally as open to messages from darkness. Chad Daybell was arrested on June 9th after human remains were found on his East Idaho property. They were the remains of 16-year-old Tylee Ryan and 7-year-old J.J. Vallow. The children were missing for just a few weeks when Chad married their mother, Lori Vallow. You know, I feel like he lived this double life. Court records contain shocking revelations about the couple's alleged religious beliefs. According to a probable cause affidavit, the couple claimed to belong to the Church of the Firstborn. Their mission in the church was to lead the 144,000 in the end times and to rid the world of zombies. The allegations raised questions about where those beliefs came from. As for the notion of ridding the world of evil people, that's, that's not the object in Latter-day Saint uh, theology of, of what you do before Jesus comes. The Church of the Firstborn exists within the LDS, but Mormon Studies professor Kathleen Flake says she has never heard of zombies in LDS doctrine. If there's anything that lends itself within the, the mainstream or even within the, the doctrines of uh, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, it's probably the uh, sense of immediacy they have about the last days. Eric Smith isn't the only one with second thoughts about Daybell. I'd like people to understand that he, his message is very different from the message I share in my podcasts, my blogs. Smith met Daybell through author Julie Rowe, an energy practitioner who was also recently excommunicated from the church. The Daybells published Rowe's books through their imprint, the Spring Creek Book Company. There was something about his energy that always kind of like bugged me. But I, I would look past it because I was, I was picking up on a, his potential and that he had like a pretty good heart. But in March 2019, Rose says she cut ties with Chad after a series of red flags, including visions of him with Lori Vallow and others. It was very clear to me that not only was he not going to apologize to me or admit that he was having an affair with Lori or anybody else, Roe also claims Chad made unwanted sexual advances towards her in December 2018. Daybell's lawyer did not respond to a request for comment on the allegations. I think initially they thought they were light uh, and they were deceived. And I think this really gets to the heart of this case, which is what is really going on here? Are these legitimate beliefs, and, and where do they come from? Or is it just a cover for, you know, something old-fashioned, like an affair, like sleeping with someone, like you know, getting a new wife and, and collecting life insurance and, and having a life with your new wife? You know, and I'm wondering what, what the true motivation to all of this was. Let's bring everyone in. We've got Chanley Painter with us, Ashley Banfield, Ted Rollins, uh, all here. Um, Chanley, I want to start with you and, and this question, because religion is all around this story, all around this case. And if we have a trial out in Rexburg, Idaho, you spent time out there. 
Um, my guess is most of the people out there are LDS, am I right? You are right, and it's pretty apparent when you arrive into Rexburg, Idaho, because the town is, it's, there's sort of a hill or a mountain towards the right side of the town of Rexburg. Up on the hill is the temple, the Mormon temple. It's lit up. You can see it anywhere in the city of Rexburg. It's a constant reminder of the LDS there, and most of the people living there are of the Mormon faith. Even the university, Brigham Young University, Idaho, the largest university in the state of Idaho is in Rexburg. It takes up most of the town, as you can imagine. So there's a lot of college students, people of the faith there in the community, even up in Salem, Idaho area, the Fremont County, where Chad Daybell lived, all of his neighbors. I spoke to most of them and Boyd Price said that's really what bonds the neighbors and the communities together is their common belief in this LDS faith. And what I'm learning from Eric Smith, and Julie Rowe that Chad had beliefs outside the doctrine of the LDS faith that are a bit controversial. And as we covered in that story, both Julie Rowe and Eric Smith have been excommunicated from the church because they've been vocal about those non-traditional beliefs. Uh, well, let's hear more from Julie Rowe because one of the reasons I'm so skeptical about the beliefs and, 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 and Chad Daybell and what his true motivations are, are because of statements like this. Take a listen. I love Tammy. She was amazing. She's still amazing. She is in a beautiful place of light and she has earned it. It was like the spring or fall of 2017. Chad came to me and said that he had had a vision that Tammy had died in a car accident. Three weeks before Tammy died, I was on the phone with Chad and I was prompted to ask him if he still saw Tammy dying. And that's when he said what he did to me. And he always put it in a, his life plan. It wasn't, I have a plan to kill Tammy. It was my life plan, right? My eternal progression plan. When he said, yes, I don't feel that my plan can go forward until Tammy dies, I waited. And I saw Lori's energy. I, I had a vision of her and Chad. And I saw a, uh, the physical, Chad's physical body. And then in his space, so like in his aura, was, Chad, uh, was Lori's spirit. And she was attached. And anytime I see an attachment like that, it's a, it's a dark attachment. It's unhealthy. All right, there's a lot to that statement, but my focus is really on the beginning where, uh, Ashley, Chad Daybell is predicting the death of his wife. Someone takes a shot at her when she's in the driveway a week before she dies of natural causes at home. All of that makes me think that this whole thing is just a ruse. It's, it's just a way for, for Chad to get people to like him, especially the ladies. You know, um, listen, I'm not a, a student of um, cults, but I sure know about the cults that turned into mass murders and national and international events. And oftentimes those cult leaders plied their trade based on sex. I mean, look at David Koresh. He was having sex with younger members of those in the Waco compound. He had many wives in the Waco compound. Those who were married in the Waco compound weren't allowed to have sex with their husbands. They could only have sex with David. So that was his cult belief. He had a lot of religious beliefs as well, but that was a big one. And Charles Manson had a cult and he based a lot of his cult around having sex with all of the girls. And so I wouldn't be the least bit surprised if uh, the motivations of Chad Daybell um, started religious, but ultimately the libido took over and he accommodated for that in just about everything he did. And certainly when it comes to Lori, he set his sights on her and ultimately everybody around her who might have been an impediment died. Her husband died, her brother died, her children died, his wife died. Again, a lot of it goes to sex. I don't think it's so religious anymore. I think it's kind of good old fashioned murder stories. Yeah, it, it, to me, it's very typical. Lust and, and, and insurance money. Uh, Ted, LDS, as Chanley said, you know, that's, that's who lives there. Those, that's the jury pool. And now you've got a guy who's, who's practicing something that's outside of that, and we're going to have testimony about extramarital affairs, et cetera, et cetera. I don't think any of that is going to play well uh, with the juries out in that part of Idaho. 
Not at all, because the, they're very sensitive that um, their religion is being portrayed in a negative way through this guy. Um, I, I totally agree with you. I think they are going to be very hard on him because they're going to be disgusted the way that he used the power that he had over, especially women, um, but also using the Book of Mormon and the and his distorted beliefs. Um, I, I think he's in big trouble in terms of a jury pool. All right, let's listen to more of Julie Rowe. She's very interesting. She was close to Chad Daybell, close to Tammy Daybell. Um, and how does she believe that Chad killed Tammy? Take a listen. Whether they ever find any physical evidence that he poisoned her, he actually could have used an energetic poison weapon. Now, this is going to sound like the craziest stuff to people, but I speak the truth when I say this. Spiritually and spirit realm, there is warfare going on just like there is on this planet, and there are spirit weapons. And if you are skilled in it, if you do not use your gifts for the light side and you use them for the dark side, you can do, you can physically manipulate items, you can physically manipulate elements and energy. And I believe um, Chad Daybell had learned how to do some of that. So they may never find anything on Tammy Daybell physically. But I will, for the first time, go on the record saying, I Chad Daybell killed Tammy Daybell. You know, Chanley, when I listen to Julie Rowe, um, I hear that she's got some information that I think could help in this case. Do we have any idea if she is a potential witness in the pending cases now or perhaps in any future cases involving future charges down the road? No indication as of right now, and I spoke with her at length today, and she does have some interesting theories and practices and, and her ideas. She said that was the first time she's going on the record today to, to say that she believes Chad killed his first wife, Tammy Daybell. She also believes that even though Alex Cox's autopsy came back natural causes, that that was suspicious. That was also a murder. So it's interesting. She says that she knew Chad very well, considered him a friend, even when she had visions and learned about him with other women and infidelity. She said that's really different from murder. When the children originally went missing, she defended Chad Daybell for publicly for a while. And then she said that her visions and her, the angels gave her this sort of different feeling about it. And now she has no doubt in her mind that he is guilty along with Lori Vallow of all the deaths they're associated with.